So, Heavenly Father, I present myself to you, Lord. I present myself to you, Most High God, because you are the God of all flesh and nothing is too difficult for you. You are immortal, invisible, only wise God. You are the almighty, victorious, the ancient of days. Take these lips of clay and use them for your glory. Take these lips of clay and anoint them with the Holy Ghost and power. Take these lips of clay and anoint them with the Holy Ghost and the power of the presence of God, that some life may be changed, some heart may be touched, some a heart of stone may be turned into a heart of flesh. Heavenly Father, reveal Jesus. Uh, to us. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to us. In the mighty name of Jesus, reveal who Jesus is to us. I pray that somebody's faith may never be the same. Again, that somebody's life may never be the same. Again, even as they meet and have an encounter with God, the Most High, Jehovah El Shaddai, the double-breasted one, Jehovah Shammah, the God who is there. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Catch the anointing. Catch the anointing that must have been upon the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Also hear our true life testimonies of how God del delivered us as the Chiriseri family from the fire attacks on our lives. Daniel chapter 3 is our keynote chapter today. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1 to 5 we will end with. So when the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, were thrown into the fiery furnace because of their faithfulness to God, King Nebuchadnezzar came to witness their execution. But he was stunned to see not three, but four men in the fire. And he recognized that the fourth man in the fire was none other than Jesus, the Son of the living God. The Bible says in Daniel 3, verse 24, Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. And he rose up in haste and he spoke to his counselor, saying, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and they said to him, True, O king. And he said, Look, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they're not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar, verse 26, went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come forth, come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. Hmm. And the satraps, the administrators, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together. And they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. Hallelujah. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected. And the smell of fire was not on them. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar, verse 28, spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any other god except their own god, the god of heaven. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut to pieces and their houses made in ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Hallelujah. There is no other God who can deliver us like this. So I don't know, my brother, I don't know my sister today, 
what your fiery furnace could be. But what I'm sharing today is true life stories of our fiery furnace situations. And I am sharing uh, testimonies about real fire, like the, a, a season that we went through where the enemy of our souls was trying to take our lives away prematurely through attacks by fire. And so I want you to realize that the fourth man that was seen in the fiery furnace when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had refused to worship any other god, to bow down to the golden uh, statue to go, uh, that, had, that King Nebuchadnezzar had created. You see, kings of this world are not necessarily Christians. The laws they make are not necessarily in line with the word of the Lord. And so Daniel, I mean Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were boys like Daniel that feared the Lord. In fact, the Bible says about them, and you need to know what it takes to attract the kind of anointing that can save you miraculously like that. The Bible says, as for these young men in whom there was no blemish, they were good looking, they were gifted in all wisdom, and they possessed knowledge, and they were quick to understand, they had ability to serve in the king's palace. But my Bible tells me in this age that they purposed in their hearts that they would not defile themselves with a portion of the king's delicacies. So some of the laws and regulations that are made by earthly kings defile us. But for you to be able to attract the kind of anointing that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego attracted upon their lives in their fear of God, by refusing to defile themselves with the king's food is what you and I have to do today. We have to put purpose in our hearts that we will not defile ourselves with the king's delicacies because some of the laws are so permissive. Some of the laws make us feel like we are now more educated even as these Daniel Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, verse 17 of Daniel chapter 1 says, As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. And they were able to stand and walk tall in the marketplace and in their worship of their pure worship of their God. And that is what it takes for us to be able to attract the extraordinary anointing that was upon this young man. Where the Bible says, verse 27, the top guard of government, they saw they gathered together around them and they saw that they saw these men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, on whose bodies the fire had no power. Hey! <laughs> and today, this is what I want to share. True testimonies that this word is not a cake, that the word of the living God never returns to him void that the word of the living God is sharper than any two-edged sword dividing asunder between spirit and soul, that it lives, that it is living, it is quick, that it is not of the past. So we read about these four men whose bodies the fire had no power. 
but I want to give you true life stories. <laughs> Not something I read in a book, but something my children and I have experienced that we may know that Daniel chapter 3 verse 27 is true yesterday, today, and forever. That the supernatural is what we need when we cannot help ourselves. That the anointing is for the supernatural. And that the anointing can cause fire to have no power over your body. For real. Not as in a story or a sermon. I'll give this life testimony. I don't remember the years I need to look in my you know, in my diaries and all that, but a series of times God delivered our lives from premature death. There was one winter where Lisa had forgotten to turn off the heater. It was so cold. She had put the heater right up, like almost at the same level as the bed. And so the heat must have become so hot, her duvet caught fire. And guess what? Apostle Charles was was I, I don't know what time of day it was because I wasn't in that incident, but it was early morning. He he just happened to walk into the room, into his daughter's bedroom, and there the duvet was on fire. And he of course pulled it and threw it out, and they put out the fire, and Lisa was still asleep. You can say, oh, okay, that was. Maybe just a coincidence. I'll give you another true life testimony. When Zoe, Lisa is our second born, when Zoe, our third born, and it happened, all these things happened around the same time. When Zoe was at Vitz University, she came back home to her apartment to find that her apartment could have caught fire had it not been for angels that moved things around, literally took the extension adapter, unplugged it from the socket and moved it, I think, onto a table or a higher surface or something like that. And that was because, for some reason, the place had become flooded with water. And so, as you know, water and electricity equals disaster. You may say, hmm, maybe, maybe not. I'll keep bombarding you with more testimonies for you to know that we serve a living God, that the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is still our God in this present-day life. The year that our HPMI Mashingo Church was launched, we drove back and I remember that whole journey we were singing this song on protection, on God's protection for some reason. We sang it the whole way. Normally when Apostle Charles would drive out, normally just sleep, you know, like you know the madam does. <laughs> but for some reason I was up the whole journey and we were just singing the whole journey. You know? And I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust in you. Though I walk through the valley, Lord, I fear no evil. La, 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 la. My heart will trust 
in you. My heart will trust in you. My heart will trust in you. My heart will trust in you. And the whole journey we were playing that and singing to that DVD. So anyway, we got home. It was late. We are tired. And we went straight to sleep. And it turns out that actually that night the devil tried to kill us in our sleep with fire. But we were so tired. We never woke up. We slept like babies, as is our testimony, was always our testimony. Until the following day, to our amazement, you see, I used to lock my our, our bedroom, and I used to come back from work, and I would unlock the bedroom. So I did the same. This is now the following day that we discovered the protection of God while we were sleeping. There's so many times that God protects us, and we don't even know. But listen to this. So I came back from work and it was a winter day. So I went straight to the switch on the heater, which was my usual routine. You know, before I'd go to the kitchen or anything, I'd, I'd just heat up, you know, I'd heat up the room and then close the door and go back and do whatever, you know, in the kitchen so that we'd find the room warm. But to my shock, the electric cord was burnt and the plug was cut it was bent and the plug was separated from the rest of the cord so and, and then as i continued looking the plug had been unplugged from the wall socket and the plug was now on the floor and as i looked the carpet was burnt for about a ruler size. And as I kept looking, I looked up and the silk curtains, which were right by the socket, were also burnt. And my eyes went up and the silk curtain was burnt up to about one and a half meter height. I mean, that was the most amazing thing. So when Apostle Charles arrived, I showed him, and he said, actually, that explains it. He says, I smelled the smoke in the night, and it was like I was choking. But then I later, when I woke up, I just thought, ah, I must have been dreaming, you know, because... Uh, when I, I was choking, I just went straight back to sleep. So literally, I don't know whether you are hearing what happened here. So what happened is that that night, we must also have forgotten to switch off the heater. And the angels, God sent angels, literally, to not only... Turn off the plug. Oh, yeah, that was the other thing. The plug was off, but the, the you know, <laughs> it's, yeah, you needed to just see it. The switch was off, it was up, the plug was out of its socket, it was on the floor, it was bent, it wasn't connected to the rest of the cord, and the carpet was bent, and it stopped. And the the curtains were burnt and the fire stopped. All in the night, we were sleeping. <laughs> and you want to tell me there is no God? I, you want to tell me the work of angels on assignment is just a farce? I took our bedroom silk curtains to church that Sunday and I lifted it up in front of the congregation I don't know whether any uh, of you were there in that service if you were you know please just you know testify together with me about the power of God's presence 
I, I've kept that souvenir, that bent, a half-bent curtain to this day. It's a souvenir of the power of God's presence. It's a souvenir of the supernatural. How does silk of all materials, I mean, it's, it's, it's a flammable material. How does it stop halfway? <laughs> it can only be his angels. Well, another occasion. You see, our house in 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 Borodale, there are lots of old houses, and ours is one of those. And we've been having to rewire it over the years as we discover electrical faults. So one night, I I I reached out. To, over to the wall to turn the light switch off and I was zapped by this electric current and at the same time a big flame that made a big bang sound came from the switch and I was electrocuted and thrown violently across to the other end of our king size bed in shock Apostle Charles rushed over to, 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 to where I'd been thrown onto the carpet on the other side and um, brought to our surprise. Number one, I was not bent. Number two, I had no scratch. I had, number three, I, I, nothing happened to me, literally. Both the electricity and the physical fire did not touch me. They threw me, but just the other day I was reading about the unfortunate incidents of a, a young lady in Kwekwe who was electrocuted, you know, I think in a bathroom or something, and she died. That would have been my death day had it not been for the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Had it not been for the power of the supernatural, for the power of the presence of God, for the power of the Holy Spirit, whom we acknowledge and who is in us, because the Bible says we are the temple, our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. And this is in First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. I'll give a fifth example if you still do not believe that we serve a living God who is able to deliver to the uttermost those that believe in his name and that call upon his name. So equally profound is this other deliverance from another physical fire attack we were coming back home from some late night church meeting. We were with our last born daughter, Nisi. And so because we were so tired coming, you know, uh, from this late night meeting, I later was thinking it through and I'm like, we we're really not thinking. When we got home, it was dark and there was no VESA, you know, electricity. And all we wanted to do was just get some food and go to bed and get our very much needed rest. And so, but, so the generator needed to be turned on as soon as possible. That's all that was on our minds. So all of us found our way in the darkness into the lounge. Then Nisi and I sat on the couch facing the window. I saw Apostle Charles take the short candle, there was a short little candle that was on the mantelpiece over the fireplace, and matches. And I saw him run down the garden to turn on the generator. If somebody is listening, they are thinking, candle, generator. We were not thinking we were that exhausted. Ministry can be so exhausting. He took such a long time. And I was wondering why. So why we sat staring at the window into the darkness outside, we saw this huge 
flame, tall, like towering into the sky, down the garden. But I, I didn't think anything of it. I thought, oh, it must be next door. And so we continued chatting away in the dark, waiting for, for Dad to come back. He took a long time, more than 20 minutes. And when he came, he was looking quite shaken. And uh, I said, hey, what happened? And this is what happened. He says, when I, when I got to the generator, the generator is enclosed in a little, in a low house, in a concrete house, like for security. So he says, I crouched down and I turned on the matchstick and I lit the candle and I approached the generator. He says, as soon as I was putting the candle, as soon as I tried to put the candle on the generator, the Spirit of God spoke to my spirit man and said, generator, petrol, fuel. He says, before the Spirit of God even finished, before the, that sentence was finished, he says, he was engulfed. He says that the generator just caught fire and it went boom and he says he was thrown out of the house out of the little house and 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 the 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 the, the fire engulfed him jumped over him and the bush behind him caught fire when you come to the mission house you must come so that i can show you the bush is still there. It was black for many years. It caught fire. And so that was the fire that we saw towering into the sky. But because it was dark and, you know, I, so he says, I rushed. I quickly thought, we, you know, we just removed our carpets to tile the whole house. So we had that under felt. He says, I ran, got the underfelt, threw it into the pool, rushed with that heavy underfelt, and threw it over the generator. He said, I rushed and I got some more, and I threw it over the little shrub that was burning. It's a, I think it's a poinsettia, beautiful, beautiful little uh, shrub. So he said he threw. So he says that's how he put out the fire, and he then says I then removed the wet blanket, and I turned on the generator, and the generator still turned on. Hello. <laughs> so when he walked in, he was shaking. He was saying. I could have died today. And so God, by the power of his presence, made sure that the fire had no power over his body. It literally went from the, he was, his body was between the generator and the shrub behind him. And the two were on fire, and he was in between. So, uh, yeah, we were shocked. The fire went right through him and behind him. And it was a huge flame. We saw it. So anyway, we went, we thanked the Lord, and we went to sleep. But then the following morning, as we prepared to go to work, and it, and so there was more lights, like in the bathroom, my eyes then just fell on his hair. His hair was brown, <laughs> like brown. I 
said, sweetie, he said, what? I said, your hair is brown. <laughs> so when you read the Bible and the Bible says the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the king's counselors, they gathered together around the three Hebrew boys and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed. No, where their garments affected, nor the smell of fire. There was no smell of fire on them. I, we experienced it in real life. His hair was scorched brown. Those that knew Apostle Charles, he hardly ever kept hair the size of a nail, you know, small nail. And not this lady's long <laughs> nails. So short hair was burnt, but he had not a scratch. He was not burnt anywhere else. Just the hair was the proof that fire went through him. And so people have asked us many times, so how did you cope with the accident? And, you know, you guys are so strong. No. It is not, it's got nothing to do with us being strong or our strength. It is not in our own power. It's not by might, nor by power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. It is because as a family, the reason we could easily accept the departure of the founding apostle of this church, his presence ministries, international church, it was because we had seen God and the power of his presence. To save. We had no reason to doubt the power of God in saving our lives because it wasn't once, it wasn't twice, it wasn't three times, it was many times when we had demonic attacks and God saved our lives. And so when the accident happened and he did not leave and the many times that God had spared us and showed us the power of his presence, showed us how he appears as the fourth man in our every situation, taking off plugs from sockets, putting them on the floor on the floor and turning out the fire and putting out the fire and making the fire go through us and the fire have no power over us. We had experienced such potency of the power of his presence, of the power of the Holy Ghost, of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That's why it was easy for us to know that Okay, with the accident, it means this was how God wanted him to go. And uh, that's why we were able to accept.